Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents, and this is God's Church of Love online sharing Bible study on Tuesday. Now, for many of you who go to churches, you will be hit with this scripture. And I want to tell you, I have researched and looked and listened and listened to people who did doctorate ex exegesis on these subjects. And we're dealing with giving of all kinds. And I want you to hear what the Old Testament says. Then I want you to hear what the New Testament says in contrast when it comes to tithing, giving, offerings, sharing with one another in love in all kinds of ways. So I want you to hear this so that you will never be under bondage or guilt again. All right. So for those of you who believe in tithes, bless you. That's fine. And for those of you who don't, bless you, that's fine. Stand fast in the liberty. But remember this, whatever you do for God is not under obligation, all right? Your obedience is in righteousness, not in finances. It's strictly a heartfelt thing that you do out of your increase, out of your surplus, all right? Let me share this story real quick, real quick. I, I, and then I'm going to read the scripture. Um, somebody I knew had hired somebody to do some work. Somebody they were, you know, winning to the Lord, all of that. And the person was going to do yard work. Well, the man had a slight dis, disagreement with their wife. Because the wife said, you're taking money we need for utilities and you're trying to bless somebody with it before they even did the job. Now, the conversation was shut down by the husband and he did what was in his heart to do. However, <laughs> the man never finished the job and the bill had to be broken up into payments because it had not been taken care of. It was a utility bill. Now, that particular week, the man got on a bus and came home and confessed to his wife that God spoke to him through a stranger. Mm, mm, mm. And the stranger was a born-again Christian with a word of prophecy and a word of knowledge for him. And the word was, God told me to tell you, yes, you have a good heart. But there is a time to give and there is a time not to. When you have bills at home and you have to take care of your family, home comes first before you try giving. You have to make sure your bills are taken care of. Your household is taken care of. You don't take from the needs, from the necessity of your household to give. And he came home to his wife and apologized and told her she was right. God gave him a word never to do that again. Now, I'm saying that to say this. Many of you are told three things. You give from your substance. You pay tithe. Tithe is one-tenth of your income. You give that off the top before you pay anything else. We're going to deal with that. Then they go to Malachi and read that to make you feel like, wow, I don't want to be cursed. All right. We're going to deal with two scriptures in the New Testament that shed some more light on it. So you will understand why, why you must set yourself in a position of freedom and faith. Whatever you do, it's by faith. All right. Now, that's why I won't trash it. I won't encourage it. That's between you and God. Now, I want you to hear this. Um, I've got to read it and I got to shrink this baby down because it's in my way. There we go. All right. Verse 7. This is Malachi 3, verse 7. Even from the days of your fathers, 
Ye are gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Mm hmm. I forgot I didn't have the light on. Sorry, you guys. All this is, there's no editing because my iMovie, I messed up on that. I have to call Apple about that. So anyway, mm. even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, wherein shall we return? Verse eight, will a man rob God? Here it comes. Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now. Herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast a fruit before the, before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. All right, now. <coughs> Here we go. I know you've heard that preached at church before the offering many, many, many times. Mm -hmm. uh, let's deal with that, shall we? Number one, this is dealing with food. Grain, crops, cattle, food. Because what the priest did was keep the food in the storehouses of the temple and they would distribute the food among the poor, the widows, the orphans. You hear what I'm saying? So when you talk about tithes, there were three tithes. One tithe was the tenth of people's crops and you know what their land yielded. The reason for that was because the land yielded what God placed in it. So because they were giving something back to God from what he had blessed them with. People who did goldsmith, um, who did leather work, who did fabrication, you know, fabrics, whatever, who did artistry, construction, carpentry. No, the tithe was required of land, of your land, your God-giving God-given blessing of land. Now, you hear what I'm saying? The priest also paid tithes, and their tithes was to bless the orphans, the strangers, the poor, the widows. Mm -hmm. Now, there were many that were instructed there was a particular tithe I forget whether it was every three years or what. There was a separate tithe where they were they were told when they gathered up all those tithe over that time, they were to go to a place God would choose. You would spread, lay a spread out, make an offering to the Lord with all your increase. Increase is another word for profit, surplus, overflow. And you spread this thing out and it's a feast. And you eat it with the stranger, the priest, the orphan, the widow. Right there at the table with you. You share it with them. Mm. There were times when people were told with their grain and, and the different things that they had, the crops in their land, to always leave some along the ground. Don't pick everything. Leave some for the widows, for the stranger, for the poor, for those to go in and glean from your blessing. Don't charge them. That's your offering to them. God, Jesus said, when you've done it unto the least of these, you've done it unto me. So when you feed the poor, when you bless the orphan, when you bless the widow, when you bless the minister, however you choose to do it, 
you're blessing God. When you bless the homeless, you're blessing God. All your money does not have to go to a church. Remember that. All right. Now, when churches have to survive because the system has turned them into businesses. That's not God's plan, but that's the way it is. So it's a reality, and we do have to give to ministries in order for them to be able to run. But we don't have to give it all. Now listen to this. When you hear this scripture, you're cursed with a curse. Remember this. Say to yourself, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I'm not cursed. I'm blessed. Why am I blessed? Because Jesus, when he died, he nailed the curse to the cross. So whatever lingers in our lives, all we have to do is take authority in Jesus' name against generational curses, against financial curses, against physical, all kind of curses. You rebuke those babies, you renounce them because you no longer have to live under a curse when you are living under grace in Christ Jesus. All right, now, I don't know if this is even going to go up. This may just be for us guys here, um, but I'm going to see what happens. Now, the next verse we're going to is, um, please don't write me off because I'm going to share why I'm saying what I'm saying. I'm not trying to teach false doctrine. I'm really not. Let me share this with you too. I went to the Lord about this over a matter of years. That's how deep I dug into it. I asked God, give me signs, all kind of stuff. And every time I asked him for a sign, it happened. And I mean, I bound the devil and bound lies and everything to make sure that I would not be given any false information. And in all honesty, in all the years that I paid tithes, I never saw financial miracles, circumstantial miracles, divine intervention, quick, fast, in a hurry, like I did when I stopped paying tithes and chose to give offerings from my heart as an act of worship rather than obligation. All right. Now, I'm going to read another scripture to you. Got to get this out of my way so I can see what I'm doing here. All right. Now, let's go back to history. And we'll look up the next scripture because I want you to hear these scriptures. We're going through a lot of word today. All right. Let's see. Now, This is another one we hear, and it's true. It is true. Luke chapter 6, verse 36 through 39. This is third. Look, no, let's just read verse 38. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. So if you give bountifully, you will reap bountifully. If you give sparingly, you will reap sparingly. So remember, this is all that you give. That means if you give love, you'll reap love. If you give nasty attitudes, you'll reap nasty attitudes. It ain't just about money, baby. You reap what you sow. And God is not mocked. Whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So if you are always giving people a hard time, if you're always accusing people, if you're always unmerciful and unforgiving and you ain't got time for folks and their faults, their, their fallacies and their errors and their imperfections, guess what? God ain't got time for yours. Hmm. Yeah, not the way to live out your life, baby cakes. All right. Now. Let's go to, and that also goes with the finances too. If you see somebody that's out there and they're hungry, you don't have to give them your money, but you can get them something to eat. 
You don't have to just ignore it because you don't want to be bothered. But if you see they're hungry, yeah. Now, we all miss the boat on that because sometimes life is so crammed with schedules, we don't have the time to even pay attention or to do anything about it. God knows. But when we do have the time and we do have the means, hello, use what God has blessed you with to be a blessing. I'll leave it there. Now, let's move to the next scripture. I'm trying to get through as quickly as possible. Ha! Ah, this is not a polished message. I'm sorry about that, but I just want to make sure we really get the meaning of this. Now, help me find it, Lord. Ah, this is another one. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrew chapter 7. This is what people teach in the New Testament to prove their point that tithing is still of the day. And this is what I want you to hear. Now, I'm talking... I, I've got to go to heaven. I've got to face God with what I'm teaching. So I I don't want to lose out on God. So it's a major responsibility. All I'm trying to do is make you be free, not obligated. This is not under obligation. This is freedom. All right. Now listen to this. Um, Hebrew chapter 7. All right. Oh, boy, help me do this right. <clears throat> All right, verse two, this is talking about Melchizedek, to whom also Abraham gave a 10th part of all. They love reading that, of all. Hmm. First being by interpretation, king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace, talking about Melchizedek. I'm only reading that because that's the main one they shove at you. Now, before you get carried away with that, there's another scripture that describes how he did that. When you go, let me see where it says it. Here it is, verse four. <laughs> now consider how great this man was unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils. That's what he gave the tenth of all. All was all of the spoils. The spoils came from war, a, a conquest. He took the spoils of the enemy and the, the value and gave a tenth part to Melchizedek. That was not a lifestyle of tithing. That was a one-time occurrence with Abraham. Yet, they will shove that at you too. Tenth of everything. All right. Now. <laughs> oh, help me with this, Lord. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Here it is. Love this one. All right. First, uh, Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. This is where we get the adjustment from the New Testament of the, there's the letter of the law, which is Old Testament, Malachi. Then there's the spirit of the law. Here it is right here. Now, this is verse, verse six, seven, and eight. Listen to this. But this I say, he which soweth shall reap. Excuse me, let me read it again. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Now, before I go any further, let me share this with you. Your bills are paid, your food's bought, your gas is in your tank, your insurance is covered, kids got clothes on their back, you're ready to roll. Now, what do you have that you can go to the movies with, you can go to the beach with, you can do outings with? That is the part that you sow or reap bountifully with. That's what you're sowing from your spend money, your surplus. All right. Now, 
there may be times when you have surplus and God says, I want a big chunk of that given over here. And you're like, but I was going to do so-and-so with it. Trust me. Just give it. Let me give you an example. One time I was at church when I was still in the tithe paying era. And I had my check. And God had blessed me that month. Oh, my Lord. At the hair salon. Okay, my husband and I had us some spend money. It was a blessing. And I knew that that particular week was the slowest part of the month. And I had made $650 that week. All right. Now, hi, Juanita. Glad you came. I got all the mics off, so don't respond. But I just want to let you know, we're dealing with the manipulation of how they teach in giving. So, and some other things as well. So stay with me. You know, I know you came in the middle, but stay with me on this. So anyway, here I was at church and I knew the church was struggling. It was just in a low season at that point. But this church was the kind of church that gave and gave and poured into its people. And the pastor would go to court with the people, the pastor, everything about her life was about her people. So she was constantly giving, giving. And if a person didn't have food, she'd go grocery shopping and help them. And she was constantly giving, giving, giving into her people's lives from her substance, from her spirit, from everything. So this particular time, I'm writing my check and I said, okay, $650, I owe $65. That is one tenth of $650. But when I was getting ready to write 65 in the box, of my check. God flashed in that box $200. And I'm thinking, but I don't owe. See how we think? That's tied. I don't owe $200. I owe 65. God said, give 200. There's the spirit. It's not about a fraction. It's about obeying God in that moment. Now, I'm going to tell you something that happened at church the other day. It's going to blow you away. So here I am writing $200 because I knew God told me give it. Didn't hurt me at all. I didn't miss it. Didn't miss it at all. God was so busy blessing me. I forgot about what I had done with the $200. So anyway, I wrote it for $200 and that was it. And I never missed it. Never lost. Never was without. Never, never felt it. It didn't even pinch nothing. Couldn't believe how that, how that happened. But that was one of those times when God told me a specific amount, give this, I gave it. And I was still feeling great after that because it didn't hurt. Now, listen to this. There are times when God will require you to give a sacrificial offering. When he tells you to do that, that's the only time you have to do it. Because if he tells you to do something sacrificial, he'll make sure you're taken care of. But if he tells you to do it, oh, he's going to bless you for it. He's setting you up for a blessing. It's a test. But don't feel obligated. The other time you give a sacrificial offering is when you say, okay, I'm going to do this and say, no, you know, I'm, I'm going to put that off for a month. Because I love God. I appreciate what he did for me so much. I'm going to give, Lord, I'm giving you this out of, just to say thank you, out of gratefulness, right? Like the widow who gave her two mites. Jesus made a note of what she did. Two mites was way below what anybody else had given. It was the least, but it was all she had to spare. And she gave it. It's so like some people will give you the shirt off their back. They're just that giving. They're just that generous. They want to. She wanted to. And that's why it was in her heart to do. It was an act of worship. All right. Now, moving right along, this is the next verse. Every man according, this is verse seven. Every man according as he purposes in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly, you hear that? Or of, this is the key word right here, or of necessity.
for God loveth a cheerful giver. That's why so many tithers give their tithes with tears running down their eyes because it's hurting them, because it's it's really putting a strain on their pocketbook, and they don't and they wonder, well, where's the blessing? Where's all the financial miracles? But they're giving and giving and giving these tithes. And some of you may be the same way. You've been given tithes for years and you wonder why? Why not? This is the reason. Because you cannot give cheerfully when you're giving out of necessity. Necessity has a twofold meaning. One is you're giving out of money you really that's uh, that's earmarked for a bill. I'm not talking about um um I'm not talking about Broadway and Sears and all of that. I'm talking about a bill, a light bill, food, gas in your tank, auto insurance, a house payment. I'm talking that kind of bill. It's already earmarked for that. So you don't pay the tithe and not pay your bill. When the widow was instructed by the prophet, when he blessed her, he said, now you go and pay your debt. He didn't say you go pay your tithe. He said you go pay your debt. All right. So listen. So it says every man according as he purposes in his heart. So you you do it from your heart, not from obligation. Let him give not grudgingly or of necessity. Grudgingly is another word for being coerced into doing it. Or of necessity for God loveth a cheerful giver. Now. So the cheerful giver gets the blessing, but you can only give cheerfully. You hear me? When you're giving from your increase, even the Old Testament says, tithe from your increase. But since we're in the New Testament, we're just dealing with giving. Tithing was of the Israelites. Giving is under the New Testament, the New Covenant. Now, nor of necessity. Necessity, the other meaning of necessity is, and I looked it up to make sure I got it from the Holy Spirit the way I read it, obligation. The Old Testament, you better pay your tithe or your curse would curse. New Testament says, don't give it under obligation. This is the spirit of the law, not the letter of the law. So don't let anybody twist your arm behind your back. Give, 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 or you're cursed with a curse. That's Old Testament. Whatever you do out of your heart, you're blessed. I don't care if it's $5, if it's $50, if it's $500. If it is within your means and God tells you like he told me that day when I was planning on writing a $65 check to write $200, if he tells you to do it, you do it because he's going to bless that. He always blesses and awards, rewards obedience. You can trust him, but you have to do it by faith. If you don't trust him, don't even bother doing it, baby. Don't even bother doing it. You're going to do it with an attitude? Keep it. Because what God blesses is faith and obedience. And worship, true worship. Mm, mm, mm. And then verse 8 says, And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye always, having all sufficiency and all things, may abound to every good work. Now, we're going to go to Webster, because I want you to hear, I'm not making this up. I looked up the word out of necessity. That was the first time that it hit me. Tithing is out of necessity. Tithing is out of obligation. Tithing is in the letter of the law. Now, let's go to necessity. Let's type that in. All right, necessity. Mm, mm, mm. An indispensable thing. I'm moving down to where it really gets to what I'm talking about. A principle according to which something must be so by virtue either of logic or of natural law. Mm, 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 mm. Wow. See, a lot of people don't get into these into these words and really dig into what they mean. They'll just throw a bunch of 
coercion scriptures at you that God didn't put out there for coercion, but people use to, to twist your arm behind your back and make you so afraid not to. It's like obeying your parents. You don't always obey your parents because you want to, because you love them, because you're grateful for them being such good parents. No, you obey them because you don't want a booty whooping. It's like some people, okay, Lord, forgive me for my sins in Jesus' name. They just don't want to go to hell. So they don't live much of anything because they're not doing it out of, I really want to get to know God. I really want this to be a, a true relationship. They're not looking for that. They're just avoiding the fire. That's all. They just, they're just avoiding the penalty. It's like a person who goes to jail. You go to jail and... And, and you cop a plea. Why do you cop a plea? Not because you feel bad for what you did. You feel bad because you don't want to do time. So you do whatever it takes to get off easy. But you're not sorry. You don't have godly sorrow. You don't have repentance. From the heart, baby. It's from the heart. Whatever you do is from the heart. Okay. Or keep it. Just keep it in your pocket. Woo! Okay, when the need for something becomes imperative, you are forced <laughs> to find ways of getting or achieving it out of necessity. And the Bible truly says, don't give out of necessity. Obligate. I looked at some of these words and guess what I ended up with? Obligation. Mm. All right. So anyway, I'm not going to take up too much time on that. Let's move on to the next verse. Um, let's see here. Okay, Isaiah 58. This is where God's heart is. Isaiah 58. Now, it's comparing the fast of man with, with what God looks at, what God values. So, but this is dealing with giving. This is dealing with giving. And I want you to see it. It also deals with, with observing the Sabbath. Now, even though the Sabbath, uh, the, the New Testament is grace and freedom. The Ten Commandments is still our manual. You know, the New Testament did not wipe away the the uh, uh, restriction of lying and, and stealing and cheating. And you know, everything you do in the New Testament is based on love. And if you love, you won't steal. If you love, you won't connive. If you love, you won't covet. If you love, do you understand what I'm saying? So all of the law. In the New Testament says all of the law and the prophets is founded on loving your neighbor as you love yourself. And the first commandment is loving God. All right. So everything you do is out of love, out of love. That's the difference, not obligation. All right. Now, five, verse five. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? This is Isaiah 58, 5. Okay. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? God speaking here. A day for a man to afflict his soul. Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen? to loose the bands of the wicked, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, wow. and that ye break every yoke. Is it, mm, is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house, when thou seest naked, the naked, thou shalt cover him, when thou hide thy and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go forth before you. The glory of the Lord shall be thy rear reward, rear guard. They're, you know, he got your back. 
Then shalt thou call and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry and he shall say, here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, the speaking vanity, if thou draw up thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shalt thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness be as the noonday. Now, I'm going to stop there because we're just dealing with what God is looking at. All right. Now, these churches, a lot of churches will, will threaten you with the curse, with the curse, Malachi chapter 3. Uh, a lot of these different, you know, they'll talk about Abraham giving all. No, the fourth verse says he gave all from the spoils of war. <laughs> so you have to keep reading. You don't just pick a little thing out of scripture and leave it at that. You have to keep reading within context. But there is no verse in the New Testament. People who have studied and, and gotten doctorate studying this subject can tell you there's no verse found that says you must pay tithe. It says give sparingly, you reap sparingly. Give bountifully, you reap bountifully, period. You give from your heart. That's it. So if you're trying to pay your tithe and you have a bill, I'm not talking about, uh, you know, buying Coca-Colas and ice cream. No, you have a bill that needs to be paid, the bill gets paid. Now, if you want to do a sacrifice and you say, I'm not going to get this, 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 because God has been so good to me. Lord, I want you to have this. Where should I send this? Let God tell you who to give that to, whether it's a church, whether it's a ministry, whether it's a widow, whether it's a minister, whether it's a poor person, whether it's a neighbor down the street that's struggling to pay of put food on the, on, the, on the table for their kids, whether it's a neighbor across the street who needs to get to work, but their car broke down and they only need $75 and you got it to spare. And you may have to do without an outfit that you had planned to buy that month, but you know they need it and it's within your means and you know it and you got it, do it. God will bless that. 75 may not be one-tenth of your income. It may be more. It may be less, but do it if you really want to. And if you're struggling with the want to, ask God to put the want to in there if he wants you to. That's how you solve that argument. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, I'm going to share something with you. I was getting rid of this. Is the most bizarre thing. Oh, I should have brought my pocketbook so you could see it. When the message went forth on Sunday, about giving. I was getting ready to pull out a bill. I'm not going to tell you how much because, you know, what you sow privately, God will bless you publicly. So don't walk around talking about all that you give. You, you've lost all your future blessings on that particular offer. You keep that to yourself. You don't say how much. But anyway, so I was going to pull out a bill. I said, okay, Lord, I hadn't planned on doing this, but, you know, I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. So, uh, my heart wasn't all the way in it because I'm waiting for God to tell me when and how to give, not man to twist my arm behind my back. But I'm going to go on and, yeah. So I, I'm get, I'm going in my pocketbook and I'm like, wait, I know I put my wallet in my pocketbook. I opened up every compartment. And when I opened up the top side compartment, that's where I normally put my wallet. There was nothing in there but the little flat bill fold with a few cards. And my wallet was nowhere in there. I ran my fingers in it. I opened it up. I squished it. It was nowhere in there. I looked everywhere else in my pocketbook, nowhere. Got home. And I was like, well, I don't know why it's not. So I get home. I go through a witch hunt. And it was like the Lord just nudged me. Take another look in your pocketbook. That's when I knew God had basically ordained for me, it's going to sound weird, not to give that Sunday. I opened up my wallet, that same compartment where that one little flat fold was in there. My wallet was sitting up there biggest day. I opened it up. Is my money? My money was there. I was like, how did you do that, 
that, Lord. So there are times God knows your heart is, you're trying to be obedient, right? And sometimes God is saying, I'm not requiring this of you. And people will, will think that, that you're lying through your teeth. If you say God led me not to give, that's between you and God. That's between you and God. There are times when God will lead you not to because two hours later, you're going to need that $40 to buy a tire to replace your flat tire. He knows it's coming. I mean, he's a practical God, you guys. He's practical. He's miraculous too. All the financial miracles, all the divine intervention has been happening to me since I have given myself to the ministry, to my husband, and stopped obligate, uh, obligatory givings of tithes, but giving out of my heart. The miracles began then, not all the 25 years that I paid tithes. All right. Anyway, so if you think I'm teaching false doctrine, forgive me. This will be the probably the only time I'll deal with it. But the reason I'm dealing with it is because I was so grieved in my spirit sitting in church, listening. I felt like I was being beaten and beaten and beaten and beaten by the word when God had freed me and freed me and freed me. And he told me, one month, how much to give. He told me another month, how much to give. It didn't add up to a tithe, but it was a substantial amount. And I did what he told me to do. And I felt good about it. And the very next day or that evening, somebody on PayPal put that exact amount in my arm. So it was like, okay, it pays to obey God. But I didn't do it out of obligation. I did it because I love and trust him. It was out of faith. Gratitude, worship, thankfulness for all that he's done in my life. Not out of obligation, not out of necessity. Oh, okay, I'm almost done, you guys. I, I hope this, this just burned in me. I just had to deal with it because that's something I've never, I've never talked to our church family about. I want you to understand the principle of the giving is from your heart by faith, out of love, out of appreciation, out of compassion, out of whatever, but not out of obligation, not in the New Testament. We are not Jews. We are Gentiles. And the, the disciples were told not to lay the law on the Gentiles that the Jews had to follow. So what we do is the spirit of the Lord. There are times when you're on the road and you're driving down the road and you see the, the, the thing says 55 miles an hour. There, the letter of the law says 55. If it's raining and, it's and vis visibility is obscured, you don't drive 55 miles an hour. You may have to drive 25. That's the spirit of the law. Safety. Then there are other times when there's a whole lot going on and you have to get out and around a big uh, problem that could end up in a, a multiple car accident. So what you do is you accelerate and you may have to go up to 70 to get out of dangerous way. The spirit of the Lord, safety. It's the same way with giving. It's the same way with how we treat each other, how we love each other, how we come to each other's rescue, how we pray for each other, how we spend time with each other, how we treat one another, whatever we do in this walk with Jesus Christ. When we don't tell a lie, when it's convenient to tell a lie, when we can get off the hot seat by telling a lie, but we trust God and give give. God, our trust, and tell the truth through an act of obedience. When our flesh wants us to disobey. You can obey. Now, that's one thing you can do out of obligation. When you obey the word of God, 
You obey his statutes, his principles of righteousness. I don't care if it makes you draw a tear. God will honor that with a blessing. Even when you obey till it hurts, when it goes against everything in your fiber to obey, but you obey because you're determined to live for God. Those are acts of obligation that God will bless because you are determined to do it God's way, no matter what your understanding tells you. God honors obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. All right. Whew, I think I have beat that dead horse long enough. I think I'm about done. Let me make sure. Let me see. I'm just checking to make sure that I have heard everything. Uh, let's see. 10. Indians press shaking. All right. I think we're done. Yes. I think we're done. All right. God bless you. And I hope that word was helpful to you. Hmm. Wow. And let me pull up all of our goodies here so I can see you guys and turn on the mics.